It's here. Yes, I did. I bought the Eclipse 4K4s. But before you go ahead and judge me and I lose half of you that have no respect for Eclipse speakers, let me explain. Do Eclipse speakers suck? There is extreme polarizing opinions between the Eclipse lovers who think that Eclipse is the best thing that ever happened to humanity next to fire and is the gift from the heavens. And then there is the other side who just hates Klipsch and think that it's an abomination to the hi-fi world. It should never exist. Never should Klipsch speakers be in existence. Should anyone pay a goddamn dime for it? Now I understand the both side of the extreme because at one point in my audiophile journey, I did not like Klipsch sound. But as I progressed, through my audiophile journey, I began to actually appreciate and understand and love Klipsch sound to an extent where I actually bought a Klipsch speaker for myself. So, are Klipsch speakers bright sounding? One of the main things that I get from people is that Klipsch is a bright sounding speaker company. They make bright sounding speakers. And I felt the same way as well. I found Klipsch speakers to be on the brighter side. And now that doesn't change. However, what if I told you that Klipsch speakers don't have to be so bright to an extent where it's unlistenable? Now, I've come to situations where Klipsch speakers were in just terrible situations in terrible rooms, and it was a really unbearable, lively, you know, exaggerated, bright effect. And that is partially due to the fact that Klipsch tunes their speakers so that it sounds like a live performance and have that lively characteristic. Now, made that with the wrong room, with wrong placement, you get essentially a amplified effect, if you so will, of that brightness and the unwanted shrill and you know unpleasant sound to a lot of people. However, place them correctly in a correct room and you will be heavily rewarded with what these speakers can possibly do. Now, this is especially true with the Forte 4 and that's why I bring it up. I have played with multiple placement with these speakers and what I found was that when you have these speakers towed directly out towards your room, facing out towards the room, then you get an experience much like the Cornwall Force with that little bit of a forgiving presence on the upper end, which means that the high frequency is not as bright and is very listenable even for myself. And I quite enjoy it with the speakers faced directly out towards the room and you get a large sound stage as well. Now you want something a little bit more lively, a little bit more bright, told them in just ever so slightly and you get that. Told them in even more, directed towards your ears, directly facing your ears and you get a much more lively and brighter presentation if you are in for that kind of sound. So I cannot emphasize this enough. Placement is everything with this speaker. Place them wrong and you may not like these speakers at all place them correctly to suit your taste, then you will get what these speakers are all about. And I think that this is one of the misconceptions with clip speakers. People tend to just plunge it down wherever they feel like or you know, wherever their previous speakers were positioned and expect it to perform like what other reviewers or myself talk about. It doesn't exactly work that way with Klipsch. So now you may be asking, hey Jay, are you saying that if I tow these speakers in little as possible and out towards the room, does that mean that I'm not going to get any of that brightness whatsoever? To answer that question, I want to separate brightness from liveliness and openness, okay? So 
I, I find that brightness, like the, the shrill effect and that sharp sound that deters you and pulls you back from listening to music for long periods of time is taken away or minimized when you tow these speakers out towards the room by a lot, right? You, it is minimized by a lot. However, it still is a Klipsch speaker. So you're gonna get that openness, that liveliness, as if you were in the stadium where the performance was taking place, it is not going to sound rolled off or have no air. It is a very open sounding speaker inherently. So that is not going to be taken away whatsoever. You know, however you place them, that openness is still going to be there. What you are playing around with when you tow it in or tow it out towards the room is that brightness, shrill sound, the amount that is acceptable to you. That's where what you're playing around with in my opinion and from my experience of testing with these speakers for about a month now. So these speakers also have a 15 inch big passive radiator in the back. So another thing that you should consider is the space between the speakers and the wall behind the speakers. You want some space and you want to place around with how much pull you have away from the wall because if you have them too close to the wall then you get muddy bass and sacrifice clarity and it's not a very tight or pleasant bass that you want. Pull them out too far from the wall and you start to lose the grunt and heavy hitting bass that the Forte Force is capable of. So you have to play around with that as well. So again, with this speaker, this speaker is perfectly Klipsch. You have to play around with the placement of the speaker. And it is especially true with the Forte 4. So this is the shape of the, of the Tactrix horn. And this is the compression driver. So I've taken it out so that you guys can have a better look at it. But there's a very important thing about this right here. Now the mid-range compression driver here is the same one as the one in the Cornwall 4s. I would say that a lot of people have misconceptions with horn designs. And well, I wouldn't say it's a misconception because there are horn designs that has problems. But the main thing is, the thing with horn is a, it's a natural way of amplifying sound. Just how, just like how you guys amplify your music with amplifiers, like a physical electronic amplifier, a horn design is made to amplify sound naturally. And to give you an example, you just put your hand around your mouth like this in the shape of a of a horn and you just get louder and that's why you see people in the parks trying to talk to their significant other or their child uh, across the field and they do this naturally it's like in our instincts and horns in a speaker is exactly the same way because uh, when transistor amplifier wasn't, wasn't available back then and high wattage amplifier high powered amplifiers were not readily available in the old days, they had like three watt amplifiers, tubes and stuff like that. So they found ways to make speakers more sensitive and more efficient and louder by a way of horns, a natural amplifier. So is it a old fashioned technology? Yes, yes it is. There's no denying that it's an old technology, but can it be fine tuned with any like anything in life or anything old? Can it be fine tuned with practice and years of experience? Absolutely. And that's what Klipsch has done. And that's why it's singly one of the most unique brands in the world. And no, nobody can argue that. They've been around, they sell a lot of speakers, you know, they make a lot of speakers, and they have inevitably been catering towards the horn design, which is to me something to be said. Now, I did this randomly and you know, this shape is very random, right? I could make this shape, I could make this shape and depending on the shape I make with my hand, the sound changes and that's even a simple thing as you know, with my hand. Imagine what can be done with the speaker. That's why, you know, 
this specific shape, the tactrix, is not just a marketing thing. You know, they have, if you see here, you did see you have grooves, and if you see very closely, there are fine lines and a, a certain shape to it that they have done to lower distortion while amplifying sound and also to smooth out and you know widen the dispersion pattern and so on. And I think that's just very interesting and something that you guys should think about when you look at a Klipsch speaker or any horn-loaded speakers. So when it comes to the horn design of Klipsch, I want you guys to understand that there is no congested feeling that people talk about when they talk about horn speakers. I've heard ridiculous things about people talking about horn speakers, how they're less clear, more congested in the mid-range. You get none of that, at least with the Klipsch Forte 4s. You get a very clean, if anything, more clean than other dynamic speakers I've heard, very clean and crisp mid-range and high frequency on the Klipsch Forte 4s. I can guarantee it. Now, like I said, in terms of the driver configuration, the mid-range compression driver is the same one as on the Cornwall 4s now, so it has been updated from the Forte 3s. Now, the high-frequency driver unit has also changed and saw its revision on the Forte 4s with mainly the new waveguide. And it, to be quite honest, I don't see much of a difference between the Forte 3s waveguide and the Forte 4s waveguide. They look pretty darn similar but apparently there has been some changes there. I think the most important thing is that when it comes to music, I do feel that the high frequency is a lot more clear, at least noticeably to me, clear sounding and more um, transparent on the top end than the Forte 3, but that could be due to the crossover changes that's also seen on the Forte 4 as well. So I won't talk about all the differences, although we touched upon the major ones, I'll link to a um, link in the description below where Klipsch themselves answer all the changes that has happened to the Forte 4s. But overall, there are not two major changes. I think the most major one is the change with the mid-range compression driver. Now, when it comes to the woofer, we have a 12-inch paper woofer, which I love paper and it sounds natural to me and it does on the speaker as well. We also have a 15-inch passive radiator in the back of the speaker right here. And this is actually very, very textbook. You want the passive radiator to be bigger than the driver in the front, the active driver. So with this being said, this kind of allows the cabinet to be a little bit smaller than it should be with a ported design. So that's the strength of a passive radiator as well, is when you use a passive radiator, you can minimize and make the speaker smaller for a you know, more deeper extension in the bass region. So although these, this speaker is a smaller speaker than the Cornwall 4 in the eye, this speaker is a passive radiator design. So it has that sense of scale and body to the sound as so similar to the Cornwall 4s, but the Cornwall 4s do have more extension and because of that front, you know, three-ported design, it moves a lot of air and it just dips down lower. However, the Forte 4s have a punchier and dynamic and tighter bass that just pounds to the chest and you don't quite get that much of a punch with the Cornwall 4s. It's more of a linear extension that just shakes the room. The Forte 4 has a really tasteful, really punchy bass that is dynamic and you feel it in your chest and it's a very, very fun, dynamic, exciting experience. And that has a lot to do, like I said, with the passive radiator in the back. What are you doing, Jay? Why are you throwing out your music collection and crying and having tears come down your face? Thank you for asking. I'm throwing out my music collection of poor recordings because the Klipsch Forte 4s don't like them. You don't, do you now, Klipsch Forte 4s? Yeah, no, didn't think so, picky little bit. So the Klipsch Forte 4s don't like poor recorded music. It's a very transparent speaker, it's very clean sounding, even more so than the Forte 3s or the Cornwall 4s ever did. So poor recordings don't do too well. 
Now, I'm not talking about high res music, like, you know, if you play well recorded music off YouTube, it will still sound good. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about like modern day recordings, you know, old recordings that were not very well recorded, like the te techniques that were used to record the music, master and mix. That's what I'm talking about. So it doesn't do too well when the music is recorded with exaggeration, with brightness or, you know, grain. It doesn't do so well. When it comes to well recorded music, however, it's a whoopee do. It does extremely well. You're heavily rewarded. The more, the, the more, the, the better the recording is, the better the speakers sound and portrays it to you. It is heavily, heavily dependent on the recording. So poor recordings, not my first choice with these speakers. And if you have a large collection of poor recordings like I do, you know where they belong now. So, do you ever listen to music while lying down and thinking about your life? What happened today? Why did it happen today? And why am I here listening to music at 3 a.m. in the morning, can't go to sleep? What is working at home? Just, just so much questions, no answers. I do that all the time. And at night, I can't disturb my neighbors at 3 a.m. in the morning, and I can't disturb my girlfriend or she'll beat the shit out of me. So usually, I just lie here, not even in the listening spot, and I play music. Now most speakers are not very good at low level listening, so it's not really that enjoyable. But what I found is that the Forte 4, because of its detailed nature and that lively presentation, is quite enjoyable at low listening levels as it is with high listening levels. So it is great across the spectrum. So if you want to listen to music and think about what happened to you today at night at 3 a.m. in the morning, then the speaker is perfect for that as well. Or if you are a normal person and live in an apartment or something like that. Okay, I'm gonna go back to Gear matching with the Eclipse Forte 4 is kind of weird because it's unexpected. Just like how it was unexpected when I got accepted to med school and I didn't go to med school and I'm just now reviewing hi-fi gear. S similar, on one hand, the Eclipse Forte 4s are very apparent because it's a sensitive speaker and I'll put the specs up here right now. It's a sensitive speaker so when you go from a solid state amplifier to a tube amplifier, it, the, the changes are very apparent. You definitely hear the difference between a solid state amplifier and a tube amplifier right away. However, when it comes to the quality of gear, for example, you know, I compare this up with a $800 amplifier or a vintage gear or a tube gear, and they all sound good. I particularly wouldn't say that this sounds better with tube amplifiers per se, because Tube amplifiers do give you a better holographic sound and it's a little bit more tuby in the mid-range and stuff like that. But solid state amplifiers, good you know, power does do these very, very good. It's clean, dynamic, just as it is with tubes. It is just as good with solid states. So, and it doesn't really matter the price point. And so I wouldn't really worry about you know, the quality of gear as much because it doesn't scale up as much. Now, you still want to use, you know, somewhat of a quality gear, but using like the top of the line amplifier with the Clips Forte 4, at least to me, seems like a little bit of a waste, um, at least with my experiences with the previous Clips lines and also this one. I would just say get a good tube amplifier or get a good solid state amplifier with about, you know, 50 to 100 watts and you should be happy in any size rooms, in my opinion. My favorite, however, was the Kenwood monoblocks that I have. 
these are vintage, so it's not something that I can readily recommend to everyone because you can't readily buy it. But I do have to state that this was my favorite pairing because it was, it was smooth enough that I could enjoy it for long periods of time. Great imaging, really dynamic. It really brought out the dynamics in the Eclipse speaker. The second favorite was actually the tube amplifier I had along with the tube CD player that just came in. And that was a great holographic sound staging. Now, if you want to know more about the Eclipse Forte 4 sound, essentially in terms of sound staging, the Forte 4s have a large sound stage like as if you were in a live stadium listening to the real thing. And that's the beauty about Klipsch speakers. I think the other speaker that really does that is kind of like the magnet pan speakers, which are panel speakers. However, those are way more room dependent and amplifier dependent than the Klipsch speakers are. And they do give out that similar effect of that, you know, in the living uh, stadium kind of feeling when it comes to listening to music. Now granted that you have the, them placed correctly, of course. When it comes to imaging, actually the Klipsch 44s have improved quite a bit from the Klipsch 43s in my opinion, as well as, uh, you know, because of that uh, uh, ability to be really more clear sounding than the 43s. So the imaging is really pinpoint for a horn speaker and even center imaging is there and it's really, really nice. So imaging, if you are a fan of imaging and you were worried because you found that horn speakers don't image very well, the Klipsch 44s do image very, very well. Now, when it comes to the overall sound characteristic, I would say that the uh, bottom end is very strong and the high frequency is a little bit lively and forward like any other Klipsch. So, and this may kind of lead you to believe that this is kind of like a V-shaped sound. And it kind of is, but it, unlike the previous Klipsch speakers in the past or with certain speakers that sound like this, it doesn't have that sucked out mid-range. Sometimes you get that sucked out lean sounding mid-range. No, not on the Klipsch 44s. The mid-range is full, full bodied, luscious, has gut to the sound and the voices and strings. It's not lean sounding whatsoever. And I think the other speaker that kind of comes to mind is the Klipsch Heresy, which is kind of like that lean sounding in the mid-range a little bit. The 44 is a much more full sounding speaker and closer to the Cornwall 4s in that way. Especially if you have them, um, you know, set up properly from with the space behind the wall behind the speakers. The wall behind the speakers. If the distance is right, then you get that delicious, you know, full bodied bass and mid range as well. So that's pretty much it. Now, if this video does get about, I don't know, I'll say 1,000. One, 1001 likes, I will give away a Klipsch Forte 4 on this channel to any of the subscribers. And to date, I'm very proud to say that overall on this channel, we've given away about what, like $10,000 worth of gear up until now. And if you count Patreons, Patreon giveaways, we, we've done all together maybe $20,000, $25,000 worth of giveaways in the time we had this channel, which is not a very long time. So thank you very much for watching. Make sure to click that like button and start sharing so that you get we can reach that 1001 like on this video. And maybe, just maybe, I'll give away the Klitsch 44s on this channel.